Okay, today we're going to talk about a linearization technique that also improves efficiency called eliminate, envelope elimination and restoration. We've already learned that power amplifiers, particularly linear amplifiers, are most efficient when they're operating near their saturation point, and that is when their voltage swing and current swings are at their maximum. Envelope elimination and restoration is a technique that tries to put the amplifier close to saturation as much as possible. Now, one thing that envelope elimination or EER also does is allows us to use a switching amplifier in a linear transmitter. Now the challenge with using a switching power amplifier in a linear transmitter is that if we look at the P out versus P in characteristic, we typically with a switching power amplifier, see a characteristic that looks something like this. The output is off until some point when the input crosses a threshold that allows it to switch, and then it turns on very hard. So there's no sensitivity of output power with respect to input power. In other words, it's not linear. Now, more realistically, a switching amplifier might do something like this. It might turn on slightly, but it's still not very linear. Of course, what we're really looking for is a linear PA response, so something that looks something like this. A linear output, maybe at some point it starts to saturate. So the real challenge is our switching PA is not linear. In other words, the output is not linearly proportional to the input. And that's what we expect with any amplifier. The output should linearly follow the input by, the, by some fixed factor, the gain of the amplifier. So we have a solution. Saturated amplifiers are linearly dependent upon the power supply. It's important to note that switching amplifiers are saturated amplifiers and that their outputs are constant regardless of the input power. So we've seen that the output power of a power amplifier is typically proportional to the RMS voltage squared divided by R opt with some proportionality constant. Now we've seen that alpha is equal to 0.5 for a class B power amplifier or 0.577 for a class E amplifier. So that coefficient in front of the uh, expression for alpha power that we've seen consistently uh, is uh, alpha. And we can rewrite this in the log domain. So if we're to plot the output power versus the log of the supply voltage uh, from the expression above, we see that it's linear. In other words, it increases dB for dB. All right, so this is critical. This tells us that we can make a linear amplifier if we just change the supply voltage of the amplifier, regardless of whether or not the amplifier is saturated now this is important because the energy efficiency in a power amplifier, the PA's efficiency, to a first order does not vary with the supply voltage. Now in reality, the efficiency does vary with supply voltage. So here I've drawn an ideal characteristic of the efficiency of a PA with respect to the supply voltage, but in reality, it is going to roll off at some point. Nonetheless, what we're going to see is that it rolls off slower versus supply than it does versus input power in a typical linear PA. So one of the reasons that it does change with supply is that the optimum termination resistance, R opt, does change with the supply voltage. This causes degradation in the efficiency and it also causes degradation in linearity. And finally, we have realistic supply regulators that need to, that need to provide this supply. Uh, and those, uh, uh, and finally, we have regulators that need to provide the supply and their efficiency reduces at lower supply voltage. And one additional thing is that the PA driver power doesn't necessarily reduce as the supply voltage is reduced. So here is the EER concept. We're going to split a complex modulated signal into amplitude and phase modulated components. So the 
AM or amplitude modulation component and the PM or phase modulated components can be processed separately by the amplifier. We know that PM doesn't require a linear amplifier and AM does, so we're going to use the supply modulator to provide the AM signal and the PM signal will be processed by the amplifier directly. This is sometimes called polar modulation because we're working really in the polar domain where we have a vector comprised of an instantaneous amplitude and an instantaneous phase. Now I would note that we can apply these signals to either a switching PA or we can still use the EER concept with a saturated linear PA. In the next lecture, we'll look at how we generate AM and PM signals from a complex modulated signal. We can do this using traditional analog techniques, or we can do this in digital signal processing. Please remember to like, rate, comment, and subscribe, and I will talk to you next time.